friends at the pump house. That's my cousin. Oh, yeah. No yeah. shit. <laughs> That's so cool. OK. Um, All right. Hi. Um, I'm Farah Al Qasimi. I was born and raised in the United Arab Emirates. And I live here in New York now. Hi, Farah. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I'm Ro Etheridge. And uh, yeah, I live in New York from the South. But. Cool. You want to start? Can I pass? <laughs> that seems a little unfair, but I can, I can try. I mean, you know, I mean, we could go at the same time. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's a question that gets asked a lot, especially, you know, um, now that everybody's using photography for different reasons. But for me, it's always, as a medium, it's always defined by intent. Um, and I think of it really just as like a framing device or as a filter for like how anybody wants to approach or engage with the world. So like anything from an Instagram photograph to, you know, any one of the, um, I don't know, more, more practiced versions of image making that, that are on these walls. My, my opinion is that it's all completely valid. Um, but I don't know. I know there's a lot of people who are purists who would probably disagree with that. Hmm. Do you? Uh, well, I mean, like, the, the question is, do I... What? Do you think that photography is all-encompassing, or do you think that it, it is, like, specific to a certain way of engaging with the world that has maybe more intent? Uh, no, no. I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost like um, there isn't really a word for what it is, but I'll say it's, like, uh, multiple. It's not a it's not singular, whatever it is. Yeah. So uh, you could say all encompassing, I guess. But yeah. like um, something about that sounds like like I need to I need more information about what is all encompassing, <laughs> even yeah. though it seems self evident. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends on the context of you know. What's the destination? What's the intention, as right. you were saying before? Like, right. uh, and then, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, I think that multiple or heterogeneous uh, aspect of it is like what, you know, what's, what was interesting before when it was called democratic, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so the, the, that's sort of like where my interest was when I sort of had the, a revelation. So I was, I'm sticking with that. You yeah. Know? I think that makes sense. I mean, wh one thing that I think about a lot is um, it's always interesting to look at like Eggleston photographs now, because when you think about how regular they were as like artifacts of the time and how now they have this extra layer of aging to them mm -hmm. that helps us to see them as capital A art or capital P photography. But mm -hmm. I always just like, try and think of what it would look like to be just like a regular person in the 50s and 60s looking at an Eggleston photograph and, you know, and kind of having that like knee-jerk reaction of like, well, why is this art? You know, it's not in black and white. It's sort of like there's not enough removal from the world. Mm -hmm. um, th like there's not enough transformation happening. And that's the question that I often have of photography is like, is that transformation necessary for it to be considered a photograph? That's kind of what I love about photographs, though. And, and I think that a lot of my favorite photographers are in some sort of dialogue with sculpture, because there's a real respect for the limitations of a flat surface, mm -hmm. um, and also for the meaning that can be embedded in aesthetics, right? So for, I mean, my, my particular interest, um, you know, I spend a lot of time in commercial spaces, in shopping malls, um, right. and and, I sort of think about your work in this way too, even though they, they function differently. Um, but there is there's so much that a surface can contain, whether it's like a you know stretch of fabric or um, you know it's like a Hello Kitty uh, bedspread or whatever. But for me, there's so much that can be said in the absence of figures, um, you know, in the um, in the way that different materials look in what they carry, um, in what they're stained with, you know, in what they're put um, next to. And I, I really like playing that game of trying to understand, um, you know, what, what a space is, what kind of energy it carries, uh, where, did these th where did these things all come from, you know? Like, I don't, wait, where was my shirt made? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I have that kind of curiosity about things, and I think that 
photography as a medium allows me to sort of sit with that and have an imagination about it. Um, you know, where other mediums, I feel like I'm sort of, I'm engaging just in a very different way. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like there's a real magic to not being able to step outside, you know, to step into something and to really just be confronted with, with what is there. Mm -hmm. So, um, like when you're shooting me. No, I mean, like when you just look at a photograph on oh, a wall, yeah. you know, it's kind of like for, when you go to like a, a gas station and you see a, uh, you know, mural of like a tropical destination or something. It's like that what what is what is signified, um, you know, is it, it, something so much greater than what is actually happening in the moment. But I think there's so much about desire and aspiration and um, escape that photographs can do um, and in a way their failure is really what interests me because you can't like you know I, I, I can I can look at the space in the photograph behind you I can imagine what lies behind that corner but mm -hmm. I will never know right um, and I, I, I like that I really prefer that not knowing <laughs> <laughs> you know right one of my favorite things to talk about at Yale which I say every time maybe too many times is that the Jasper Johns Oh, you know, you take the thing, you do something to it, mm -hmm. do something to it again, and then leave it alone. You know, it's yeah. like usually I'm talking about doing something else to it, but in this case, conversation that we're having, I'm thinking more about the like when you leave it alone. Like when do you stop? Yeah. So that like it can like live. You know what I mean? And like have its own life yeah. or something, or you know, be there, be present for the viewer to finish it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, it's like if it doesn't get seen, then like, why bother? You know? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I suppose I would be an artist if I didn't have an audience too, but um, it seems like a pretty integral part of it. Right. But anyway, that's a different conversation. But um, um, no, it's interesting because I was, I was, I feel that's like the whole like. Uh, you know, if the tree falls in the forest thing. Um, I was, I've been reading this book, and reading is maybe a generous term because I, I pick it up and I read a couple sentences and then I put it down because my uh. attention span doesn't exist these days. Right. But I just got this book um, by a writer called Mark Seeley called Decolonizing the Camera, colon, Photography and Racial Time. Um, and it's a, just a collection of essays about the history of photography and the colonial gaze. Um, and he quotes this, you know, the, this, the Susan Sontag essay concerning the pain of others, um, where she talks about certain images really needing an audience and other images just never needing to be made at all. And the sort of like politics of aestheticizing pain. Um, and I was thinking about that recently too, because I know a lot of people who have been photographing the protests, um, you know, and, and I just have a lot of questions about the purpose of. Of, of certain photographs over others, um, and also just like questioning the legitimacy of certain photographers needing to make certain images. Yeah. Um, and Daniel Arnold, I don't know if mm -hmm. he, yeah, but he, he, he wrote something interesting on Instagram. Instagram is just such an interesting place to Instagram. be. I'm right there now. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he wrote something that was uh, just talking about needing a camera to feel comfortable, but never showing the, the work that gets made. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. So I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm curious uh, if you have any thoughts on, on that idea of like the work needing to have an audience to exist in the same way, or if there, you know, or if there is, um, I, have you ever, okay, have you, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll phrase it as a question. Have you ever had a moment where you really wanted to photograph something, but there was something inside of you that said, no, this feels too gross or this feels too weird? Absolutely. Okay. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think in, in your most recent show, there was a photograph that had a scarecrow in it. I don't, and I don't remember, I honestly don't remember the parts that make up the whole, but I remember looking at it and thinking, you know, if I, like me as a kid who grew up in the Emirates, um, because there was a lag with like movies that we got on VHS or movies that we could see at the theater, everything that I consumed was like of the 80s, even though I grew up in the 90s. Um, and so in my mind, the like quintessential American uh, adolescence that I always wanted looked like that. It was sort uh -huh. of like wood paneling and like, yeah. like scarecrows and ragdolls. Americana. Totally. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I just got to illustrate a piece for the Times on Wayne's World and that was like my dream assignment because it's my favorite movie. Even though I don't know when it came out, but I'm like, it's a little bit before me. Um, but, 
it was, it was okay. Okay. amazing. It was about Garth, so you know, who I, everybody loves Garth. Um, but for me, it's like, you know, so you sort of like take that world, which is in a lot of ways not sexy. It's like, these are the sort, this is like the sort of like ephemera of everyday American life, Cookie Monster, whatever, you know, Scarecrow, Magnet on a Fridge, you know, like old flower bouquet maybe. Um, but then you put it, you like, you, you have it butting up against these images that you would see in a glossy fashion magazine. And like, I know you did the Telfar campaign, which is a different kind, I think, of like more inclusive or um, updated fashion imagery. But, um, you know, but you, but you see those things together and it's like that could have been the image on the wall of the teenage girl who had that rag doll. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I really enjoy that collapse. And because in a lot of my work, uh, maybe not necessarily the work that's in this show, but I, I try to um, to really think about the layering of images and to really think about what images people surround themselves with. You could talk about in my my sort of thinking is that like there's meaning, but then there's also like uh, that that feels like a like a, a burden for us to try to articulate. It's like well, it's whatever the the other person brings to it that I can't determine that for them. You know, this is not, it's not predetermined. It's mm -hmm. not like, you know, uh, up to me, you know, but I can try to make a sound that they can hear, Yeah. you see? And like, that's, that's what, you know, like I'm, you know, with these two, your two pieces in particular, like there's this kind of like, there's things that I'm putting together and things that are like, not able it's like the magnets that you know when you flip them over and they like repel each other you know there's things that don't go together and things that do mm -hmm. go together and so you have this kind of juxtaposition overlap tangent overlap issue and those things those vibrations or whatever are almost like a, like a synesthesia thing where you can almost hear it yeah. you know and I feel like like that musical analogy makes so much sense with photography because it's so multiple there's so many notes you know and even if it's just like one note played a little differently every time you can hear that do you know what i mean yeah it's really hard to have a conversation about photography as a medium because it is everywhere right. you know and it's like it's not we don't it's, I almost think about it as like you you don't really ask creative writers about what it's like to write shopping lists you know, right. but I love that, that we get to have that conversation, that photographers get to really think about what their role is in, you know, transforming this tool that is so accessible to everyone. Uh -huh. So um, for me, in terms of making meaning, I find that that collapse really important and that like that so muchness of just like really packing in an image yeah. um, and, and really like giving everything the same treatment of like elevation, um, you know, and sort of like, I don't know, and, and desire, and, and, and sh like, desired looking. So I, I like the sexy cookie monster, you know? Mm. And I also think that your, um, your description of like animal uh, photographer, that's sort of like how cookie monster feels about cookies, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, exactly. I me want photograph. Like I always like, I, I, I'm always, I like things to look good. Yeah. Um, but then there's like a deeper ethical question about like what, what should look good, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know. For, I always think about that work in relationship to your, to like the rest of your work, and how it stands out to me because there is like there's permission to be silly. Mm -hmm. I was much more um, what's the word um, self-censoring earlier on, like in the when I was in school in the late '80s and early '90s, and felt like. Uh, you know, not only had all the pictures been taken, so to speak, or, you know, like the lessons of appropriation, but it was like um, somehow it, it was like coming from the place that like there's a sort of whatever it is, presumptuousness to making pictures of other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, um, it's not that nobody wants their picture taken or that the, it was just like a safer bet to avoid the, you know, like trying to seduce or convince or, you know, trick someone into being a subject for an image 
So it was like the, the sort of moral universe that I was thinking using was one of like, you know, I will make conceptual art. There will be no exploitation of a figure. You know, it was like almost like a, you know, <laughs> you know, I guess there's a, there is a correlation between the early 90s and now that like is pretty undeniable. But, you know, there was something about that, you know, like, uh, complicity, consent relationship that was like, you know, in the air then, but there was no social media then, so it was like mm -hmm. more like reserved for art schools or the avant-garde, if you will, you know, like to have this conversation, you know, within the academies rather than, you know, like so much so in the social. Um, but I also thought that like they, that I was being smart, you know, I wanted to be a smart artist, and so that, that was a way to avoid that like problematic, like kind of uh, expressionistic, emotional, uh, intuitive self. And uh, so that's where, you know, that's like how I sort of really was like, I'm so rigorous, which means I'm smart. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm an intellectual, I'm an artist using photography, not a photographer. That's so stupid, you know, like yeah. who wants to do that? And so, Ironically, you know, like I, you know, in looking for a place to sort of land with that influence, I think the objective, German objective photography, the typological, the things that I had experienced or was interested in, uh, found a place to whatever, like, like plant the seed to, or to, to gain influence in, mm. you know, whatever, you know, the, the, the inspirational nutrition through the lens of that German objective photography, which, you know, in a funny way, like swaying back around through modern history, back around to like Joel Sternfeld, Stephen Shore, uh, you know, like 70s American color, large format color photography. And uh, I guess I, I was working on a project basis and I started feeling like I would get bored and I had to be honest with myself, like, I don't really give a shit about this, like, thesis that I'm operating on. So what am I going to do? Like, I need to be interested in this stuff and not just, like, performing, you know, being a good artist. Mm -hmm. And I had always been interested in commercial photography and assisted commercial photographers. And so it's sort of like when I moved to New York, that's when things kind of broke open. And so by doing commercial photography, and finding that like this like bad picture of a model that I made for Allure magazine is the mistake, the one of course they would never use it because she's smiling and her lips are chapped and everything's really awkward. That picture is 10 times better than this one that like you could say there's Wittgenstein, Roland Barthes and somebody else, you know, like referred to in this theoretical photography art project. But this outtake from Allure magazine just smokes that picture mm -hmm. so hard. So like, I think in that way, you know, some of that had to be jettisoned to get things moving, you know? And like, so there was this sort of like embrace of a more libidinal kind of like, yikes, this is scary. You know, this is not an intellectual program anymore. Mm -hmm. This is like letting the world in and participating in it and like taking a risk mm -hmm. in a way. But it's still, you know, I mean, I, th I still find it like, uh, hard to, you know, I mean, there are always hard questions and sometimes like, you know, it's uncomfortable, there are uncomfortable answers, you know, to these things of like, you know, what am I allowed to do or yeah. what should I refrain from doing or, and you know, I see other images, you know, like, I mean, we see so much on Instagram now and it's like, I'm so perversely in a way thrilled at the ubiquity of the camera because this stuff is stuff that you heard about or read about sometimes before <laughs> the you know ubiquity of the camera. When you go back to UAE, are you, do you feel like you have to sort of go through steps of consent to get there or is it more like once you're in, you're in? I mean, how do you like regulate that for yourself? I mean, I, I have a 
you know, a code of ethics that I operate within in order to feel good about the work being in, in the world and especially because it is a place that, that privileges that sense of boundary and formality. Right. I mostly work with people who I'm very close with, who uh -huh. know my work. Many of them are artists in their own right. And, um, and it, it feels, I know a lot of photographers use the word collaboration, and most of the time I think it's a massive cop-out, right? Because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, like we're the cookie monster and we know what we want. But um, that being said, I, I do think that there's a, there's a real sense of fun with the people that I work with, where we know each other, we're sort of just like messing around. We know that there's some, there's some sort of truth that we're trying to get at together. Um, and so we usually will set up the parameters for a photograph to be made. And I often don't know what that is, you know? But um, we just, we spend a day together and then and something happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then they always see the photographs before any, anyone else sees them. Um, and so I was having a conversation with somebody recently about audience. And I feel like this, I, I was thinking about it and I think I figured out how to sort of unlock my own relationship with the people that I photograph. I think they're not just, just you know, the people that I photograph and my closest friends and family. Um, I think they're also my primary audience. I really mm -hmm. think that if there is a joke in the image that they don't get, then I've 100% failed. Right. You know, um, and so they really have to be in on it in every possible way. Um, and, and, you know, otherwise the, the, the photograph doesn't get shown. So, um, lucky for me, I also photograph a lot of inanimate objects, so I don't, I'm not always beholden to that mm -hmm. rule. Um, but I, 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 think, I think about it a lot because I, I, do, um, I do work with a lot of women who prefer to remain anonymous, and so we'll kind of use different props or gestures that will keep their faces hidden. Mm -hmm. um, so, for me, it's always been an interesting, um, it's been a challenge that has really formed the way that I work, um, you know, obviously formally and aesthetically, 